Uh, let's wrap this up. So we'll have the test on Monday. It'll be just after seven. It'll be normal length, 10 to 15 multiple choice, four to six free response. Okay. Uh, just after seven, though, you're going to have combination lenses. You're going to have mirrors. You're going to have lenses. Uh, you need to know about those aberrations that we're going to get to today. We're going to do combination lenses today. You need to know how to draw a ray diagram. You will have to draw a ray diagram. You might also see ray diagrams in the uh, in the multiple choice, like where I'll give you either correct or incorrect ray diagrams. You'll need to pick which one is correct or incorrect. Um, the ray diagrams will help you too because you'll also have questions that'll just ask, with this lens or this mirror, what type of image is formed? So there are only about eight different scenarios. Uh, so you need to be familiar with those. The four for the mirrors and the four for the lenses. But they're very similar, right? Because the lenses and mirrors are very similar. Remember the convex lens is a lot like the concave mirror. The, the converging devices are the same as the converging, excuse me, the converging mirrors are very similar to the converging lenses. Likewise for the diverging lenses and mirrors. So you can categorize them and there are really only four scenarios for you to know. Okay? Catherine? It is a written test. It's multiple choice, so you'll need a Scantron. Uh, but you know what? That, that test is only 20 questions long, and they're all multiple choice. If you want, you can take it after the exam on Monday, and then you don't have to come in on Wednesday. I don't know if there will be time, but uh, you, can come you can come prepared for that if you like. I'm a, it doesn't matter to me when you take it, if you take it Monday or Wednesday. So if you have time on Monday, you can take it then. Wednesday, I was going to, what are you going to do? plan to go review the final? Or, or yeah, we'll to sort of go, final? go what? I'm like, yeah, we're just doing the test and then we're done. There's not really anything to review for the final. We'll have a help session before the final. When is the final? It's later in the next week. The 14th. The 14th, yeah. So we'll have a help session the day before at 3 o'clock. Um, but, you know, the final is like y'all had last semester. I've had everybody here. No, so uh, the final is made up from the five exams. Uh, I'll take those questions and I'll change them somewhat, but they'll still be the same questions. Like, for example, if you had a mirror question, it might have been a concave and now it becomes a convex and maybe change the distances or whatever, but it's still a, a mirror, qu mirror question. Uh, but, you know, if you change those things, it changes how you work it. Is that clear? Everybody clear on what the final will be like? It'll be roughly twice the, the length of a regular exam, about 20 to 25 multiple choice, seven to nine free response questions. So I don't, I, if y'all think we need to go over, I can, but uh, we'll have a help session. If we're going to fix anything, if we took the test on Monday, if we took that assessment. No, no, you won't. Uh, in fact, if people have questions about the final on Wednesday, I'll record it and I'll put it on YouTube and I'll let y'all know about it. But I suspect people won't, because people aren't usually prepared to ask questions until the day before the final. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. That's pretty technical. So, a um, couple things left to do here: combination lenses. Combination lenses. If you're in lab, you've done this in lab. It's they're pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll work through a couple of examples. You will have a two-lens system on the uh, on the test Monday. Uh, and in a two-lens system, the image of the first lens become the object for the second lens. So you just treat it in two steps, really. You determine the image distance and the magnification for the first lens. And then wherever that image is, that becomes the object for the second lens. And then it's like you have a second problem that's just dealing with a single lens system. There is one caveat to this that I'll show you in an example. So let's work through a couple of examples. This one's pretty straightforward. I have this arrangement. I want to know the position and magnification of the final image. So first, I just consider this lens. I have F1 equals 10. P1 equals 30, so I can calculate Q1. It's uh, 1 over F1 minus 1 over P1 to the negative 1. That's 1 over 10 minus 1 over 30, negative 1, 3 over 30 minus 1 over 30, that's 2 over 30, inverse is uh, 15 centimeters. Okay, so that's Q1, and then I can find the magnification.
That's my magnification due to this first lens. So my image is 15 centimeters to the right. It's inverted and it's one half the size of the original object. So my image is right about there. It's 15 centimeters here. All right, that's just like we've been doing. Now, this image becomes the object for the second lens. So this distance is 40 minus 15, which is 25, and this is equal to P2. So now this is the same problem, really. So now I'm looking for Q2. over 20 minus 1 over 25 it didn't come out oh for the magnification know mm -hmm. that you're getting Q and you're getting Q and M mixed up be careful because there's a lot of negatives floating around they have different meanings the negative magnification mean it's inverted Thanks for pointing that out there, but that's a common thing, and that's what's going to really trip people up on the exam, is not knowing the different signs for magnification and Q and what that means. Um, so here, this is 5 over 100 minus 4 over 100. Inverse of that is 100 centimeters. All right, so then I can also find M2. Negative Q2 over P2. That's negative 100 over 25 is equal to negative 4. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So uh, that means that my image Q2 is flipped. All right, so it takes this, it flips it, all right, it's negative, and it makes it four times as big. So how to draw this to scale best I can. This is 100 centimeters. This image over here is four times as big as this image, and it's inverted again. Now that's going to make it twice as big as the, as the original. And to find the total magnification, I just take the product, M1, M2. It's negative one half, negative four, is equal to 2. All right, so that final image is twice the size of the original object and it's upright, which is given because we have two magnifications that are negative. Flips it once, flips it again, and then you get an upright image. I think those are pretty straightforward. There is one caveat to this that you might have seen this in lab. I don't have this in your book, so I'm going to do it down here. There's a blank page in the back of the chapter. But actually, let me, I'll just do it up here. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying that the images flip around back up, keep them in there back up, which is Right. Yeah, because I had first a negative magnification. That flipped the first image. And now I have an object for the second lens. This is my object for the second lens. But it's already inverted, but then I flip it back up again. And that's represented here because I have two negative signs. And when I multiply two negative signs, it makes the total magnification positive. So, so it's that extra switch pretty much everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it was pointing up the other way, it would have been Right. So if this was positive here instead of negative, then my final image would have been upside down. Right. Yeah. What if... Um, that mirror, the second one, would it be behind? Okay, that's, that's what I'm going to do right now. So I think y'all had that in lab, perhaps. It depends on how you set up your lenses. Can I erase this? I want to use this space. Is that okay? Everybody done here? Here it goes. Yeah, if you use a diverging lens, it'll produce an image that'll be different. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's do this scenario. Is this gonna, I think this will also work. So yes, the answer is yes. I can't think of right off what it is, but so let's say 
like you might have had in lab, that instead of your lens being here, let's say that you you have the same lens first, but let's say that you have a second lens that is right here, and these two lenses are separated by 10 centimeters. All right. So I do the first problem all the same, and I find out that the image due to the first lens is 15 centimeters to the right of the first lens. Yeah. Don't you have a problem that's not like that? Oh, do I? Like two pages down on 291. Is that true? Yeah, where it's inside of the focal length. Focal length or just outside of the focal length, but within it. Something like that. Oh, you're right. Wait, hold on. No. Two was uh, two over twenty minus one over one over twenty. Yeah, can we do this one instead? This is a good example. It would give you. A... Of course. Oh, no, we don't have the right. I mean, can we say no? No, that was a rhetorical question. Actually. Um, okay. Yeah, this will be better. So we'll just do this again. We all go ahead and do the first problem and tell me where is the image due to the first lens. All right, so find the image distance due to the first lens. And then we'll pick up after that. We'll go back to that, that quick test problem in just a bit. I try to give you all easy numbers, okay? So your fractions should be pretty good. You can just do them in your head if you like. Or you can do your fractions. Somebody gets a Q1, let me know. All right, that's 2 over 20, 20 centimeters, right? All right, and then I can find my M1 as well. Right, it's negative 20 over 20. This is negative 1. All right. <laughs> so now my image due to the first lens is right here. It's the same side as the first object. It's inverted, and it's 5 centimeters to the right of lens 2, right? Because I know that this total distance is 20 centimeters. So 20 minus 15 is equal to 5. Uh, so now what we have here is an object on the wrong side of the lens. So we had this, remember that little chart that I showed you? It said P, if P is in front of the lens, it's positive. If it's behind the lens, it's negative. This is where we have a P that's behind the lens. Uh, and so this P2 is going to be negative. Right, so since this object, this image, which is view of the first lens, becomes the object of the second lens, since it's behind the lens, that is opposite the side from which the rays are traveling, the rays are originating here and traveling in this direction, this is our object for the second lens, and since it's behind the lens, that object distance is negative. This is the only situation where you get a, a negative object distance. So our P2 is negative 5. If I want to find Q2, it's 1 over 20 minus 1 over negative 5. at 1 over 20 plus x. 5 over 20, so it's 4. All right, so Q2 is 4 centimeters. All right, now our M2 
Oh, so is this a real or virtual image now? It's a real image. The reason I know it's real is because Q is positive. All right, so this is a real image. We're keeping it real, as they say. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Usually when somebody says nice. they're keeping it real, they're not really keeping it real at all. They're being completely irrational. <laughs> What's that? Is that from a song or something, keeping it real? They probably said it in a couple songs, but it's from the 90s. I think I it's come back. I think it's come back. All right. Uh, so M2 yeah. is equal to negative Q2 over P2. That's negative 4 over uh, Q2, which is negative 5. So this is positive 4 fifths. All right. So uh, now our second image, Q2, is 4 centimeters to the right. So it's roughly right here. It has a positive magnification. That means that the image is still in the same direction as it was originally. So my second image is going to look like this. It's four-fifths the size of the second object. That is, it's four-fifths the size of this object. And it's still in the same orientation, so it's upside down. And we can find that because our total magnification is M1, M2, which is negative 1 times positive four-fifths is <coughs> negative four-fifths. So here, since my magnification is negative, it tells me that it's inverted. It's real because Q2 is positive. It's inverted because the total magnification is negative. All right, so that's also a combination lens. You could see something like that, or it could be like the previous problem. They work out very similarly. You will not see a concave lens in your combination lens system. All right, though it works out similarly, you, uh, except with your concave lenses, remember, they just have a, a negative focal length, not a positive focal length. But it all works out the same nonetheless. Y'all could do this? I think you could probably do it, even though I gave it to you right now, right? It's just really the lens equation is all you're doing. You just got to keep your signs correct. All right. Let's try this clicker question on the previous page. It's two lens system, what is the magnification? Uh, I'll write the answers up here. One, two, one half, negative two. In case you don't have.
All right, just a few more seconds. Maybe uh, we're missing a couple people. In Ten more seconds. I'll stop at 320. Let's see, four, eight, five, and fourteen. There we go. I believe that's right. So here I've already worked out the Q1. Y'all got 20 centimeters for Q1 negative 1 for the magnification and then that gives me a P2 equal to 40 centimeters because my image is right here it's inverted same size and so this distance is 40 centimeters and then so I can find Q2 is 1 over F2 which is 20 minus 1 over 40 it's 2 over 40 minus 1 over 40 so that's 1 over 40 inverted it's 40 and then M2 so negative 1 that gives me my total magnification equal to 1 alright so uh, and then also our image is 40 centimeters to the right of lens 2 right here. It's the same size as the object here, but it's inverted. And so that makes it the same size as the object over here. It's flipped once, it's flipped again. Yeah. Do you, when we have the problem on test, do you want us to draw objects on the... It always helps me. Like even now, if I don't draw it out, I get the numbers wrong. So it's up to you. No, you don't have to, if you don't need to. No one have a purpose really, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't change the object, right? Uh, but as y'all did the telescope, my optical instruments lab, depending upon how the lenses are oriented with respect to one another, you can either get something that, that magnifies something from very close for a microscope or something very far away. So there are purposes, obviously, for two lens systems. But I just did this to make the numbers easy. Right. Mm -hmm. A learning exercise. <laughs> Okay. I did this one. You get to look scientific. Right. You can tell your friends about it. Uh, have we? I don't know where we are in the concept test. Do y'all know? Oh, no way. All right, let's do this a little bit. And then we'll do aberrations. All right, so an observer at point O is facing a mirror. It observes a light source, S. Where does he observe or perceive the image of the source? So this is our object our object right here and this is our observer so there's a person right here oh. uh, where does he observe the image of the source s to be a b c or d does the mirror keep going down no the mirror stops right here this is the mirror By the way, guys, I, uh, for chemistry major, there's some faculty interviews. You know Dr. Baker's retiring, uh, and so there are some interviews today for faculty positions. Uh, it's at 1 o'clock, 1.65. Thank you, Lauren. And you're on the committee, right? Yeah. All right, just a few more seconds. It's a remote interview. They're going to be up, you know, on the screen, but it should be pretty good, I think. You'll be able to ask questions and stuff. All right, so a few more seconds. I'll stop at 1.30. Chemistry faculty. Ana analytical, I think. Is he analytical? Yeah. And this is actually one of the questions that I interviewed. Oh, okay, right. Okay. 
Right. So, especially if you've had quantum, it'd be nice to go, but even if you haven't. Okay. Stop. B is right. Very good. People often get this wrong. But our image is always exactly opposite the, the object in a flat mirror. Draw your rays. Uh, we're going to skip this one. Right. Uh, but you can also show that, you can try this at home, that if you have a mirror, that even if, if you move back away from the mirror, it doesn't change what you see in the mirror. You do it with your phone. If you hold up your phone, trace it around the computer, that like, uh, much more you want, it'll always stay. With it? That's they, a good, they showed me, uh, I saw it on uh, Vsauce, it's really cool. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Take a little bit of your soap and hold up your phone or the camera and trace around it, and you can pull it back as far as you want. It'll no, all it's right. out, it'll square according to camera. Yeah, cool. Well, the idea behind this, like, people think that if you move back, you can see your feet, right? In the mirror? But that's not really true, that it, if, if you move back, you can't see any more of yourself. You still see the same amount of yourself. So, for example, like this lady right here, if I draw a picture of her here, it sort of looks like her, right? See, she has rays that originate at her feet, just like they did over here. But they, they strike the bottom of the mirror at a different angle. And so the rays from her feet are still going to be bouncing off the bottom of the mirror. And so she'll just be able to see her feet. If you have a little mirror, actually, you can take a little mirror and move it to and from your face, and you'll still see the same amount of your face, no matter what the distance is from the mirror. You'll try that when you go home, like your bathroom mirror is a nice one. That would work well. Take a Sharpie, or not a Sharpie, don't use a Sharpie. Soap. Crayon soap or whatever, something that'll wash off the mirror, and then just, you know, you can take a little section on it. I'll have to look for that. Is Vsauce, you say? Yeah, Vsauce. Did we answer this one? Oh, no. Here, yeah, you can answer it. The answer is uh, no. <laughs> I mean, you kind of said that. Yeah. All right. Just a few more seconds. A is the right answer. A. Okay. <laughs> it's J or P. It's P. All right. It's the inverse of Z. Really cool. Oh, we lost somebody. Oh, somebody left. That's why. Mark left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> you realize that you can click again and it will move enough. No, I didn't know that. All right. So you have two mirrors. You see your image in one mirror, but then you can see the image of that image in a mirror behind you. How far are the... Uh, Right. We do that in our bathroom. My wife. Like, we'll be in the bathroom, but we have two mirrors, and so you can look at one another. I like to play a game where she has to pick which one I'm talking to, which one of guys I'm talking to. One of the all of the infinites are actually it turns it's about eight that you can see down before it seems to, it seems like it's infinity. Uh huh. All right. That's so what I was gonna do with the, how far? How far back, that is, how far from here, back to here, do you see the image of your face? What is that distance? That's not drawn to scale, necessarily. Okay. All right, so a few more seconds. I'll stop at 1.30. C is not right. Uh -huh. It's D. It's the right answer. Let me show you. So here, this distance is one meter. All right, and then you hold the mirror out in front of you another half a meter. And so the image of your face is another half meter behind that mirror. And so this total, 
the distance from here to here is the same as this distance. It was not drawn to scale, but so it's two meters. All right. There is an image of the back of your head in this mirror, but that would just be one meter. Remember, the image in this second mirror is behind the mirror, a half a meter. You'll see? Okay. You want to set fire to a pile of dry leaves? Which mirror to use? I do not oh, we did this, this remember? I do not condone this action. Right. Which, which type of mirror did we use when we did this? Flat, concave, or convex? The security mirror is a convex mirror. That's a diverging mirror. Is that you're remembering? It's helpful to remember which are diverging and converging. All right, just a few more seconds. Up to 42. Uh, you're looking into a mirror like these guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but their image is upright and bigger than their actual people. Uh, so what kind of mirror has produced this, and is it real or virtual? I would expect several questions like this. What type of mirrors or lenses perform what type of images? By the way, is the Hubble Space Telescope. Well, you know. Thanks a few more seconds. Stop at uh, one minute. Very good. This is a concave virtual image, concave mirror virtual image. This would be a concave mirror where the object is inside the focal point, and then the this is the object, and then the image, or excuse me, the image is not there. The image is uh, back here. That's our image, and it's a virtual image. What is the focal length of a pane of window glass? Or the focal length of a flat mirror too? Sure. seconds. All right, just a couple more seconds. B is right. <laughs> I think I might have said this earlier, but if you imagine, you know, our concave lenses, that has a certain focal length. This has a longer focal length, an even longer focal length, because you're taking these out of bigger and bigger spheres. Your extreme of this is a flat mirror, and so there our focal length will approach infinity because it's like a flat sphere that has an infinite radius, right? What's that? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's basically equal. All right, oh, let's do aberrations and we'll be wrapped up. There are two types of aberrations. You just need to know what they occur in, uh, what causes them, and what to do about them. So spherical aberrations occur in both lenses and mirrors. And what they mean is that rays at the outer parts of the lens or the mirror 
focus at different focal points. All right, so you would have light rays for a convex lens like this that come into the outer part of the lens, and they would focus there. But then rays that come into the middle part of the lens focus there. And uh, I think, yeah, y'all did this in lab, and you measured the spherical aberration, and it's just the difference in those two focal lengths. What's that? Oh, yeah, I think you're right. There's two types, and they're both inverse of each other. But it doesn't matter, though. Uh, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't really matter. Just know that at outer parts of the lens, they focus at different points. Okay. I think you're right, actually, because there's less. I mean, that's what I. It's more curved. Right. It's more curved, right, at the top, so it bends yeah. more. I think so. But it's not important. It doesn't matter, really. They just know that, that uh, they, they don't meet at the same spot. That's the relevant thing. All right. Uh, the human eye, this is a problem. All right, because with the human eye, we have spherical aberrations, and you can't really do anything about it. So what does the human eye do about spherical aberrations? Curve. No. It's, well, that changes the focal length of the lens, but you would still have spherical aberrations. It's pretty ingenious, actually. Right, you have an aperture, right? So you have the iris, it blocks out light on this outer part. So that's the way that we deal with spherical aberration, is you just block out those rays. And that's what you do in a camera as well. The human eye does this with the iris, but uh, in a camera, you, you have an artificial aperture. So we use an aperture to block the outer rays. been teaching this physics for allied health this semester and there's a lot of anatomy in it I know some of your biology majors it's really pretty fascinating like anatomy the anatomy of the body and do any of y'all take anatomy is it just you Andrew a little really you've taken it I'm thinking about taking it it's a cool I think it's probably a cool class who you taking oh he's teaching it I have to do that okay we also get this in mirrors. Oh, I don't want to. Right, so you get these in mirrors too, where they focus at different points. Uh, we use concave mirrors for telescopes, right? And with a telescope, you don't want to use an aperture because you want your mirror to be as big as possible. You're trying to collect light from very dim objects. Um, let's not worry about this. You can just scratch this out. But for a telescope, you don't want to use an aperture. So what they do is to correct this for mirrors, instead of using spherical mirrors, they use parabolic mirrors. And parabolic mirrors don't exhibit this. Uh, so for mirrors, a parabolic mirror does not exhibit spherical aberrations. So telescopes usually use parabolic mirrors for their primary mirror. The primary mirror, that's the big one. All right, so almost always for big telescopes, they use parabolic mirrors instead of spherical mirrors. And so these, when you get your rays coming to different points, they all focus at the same point. And you eliminate that that issue with the spherical aberrations. There are some telescopes that do use spherical mirrors, but usually those are like multi-mirror telescopes where they use a bunch of small mirrors to make up a bigger mirror. And they correct for that in more complicated ways. But this is the easiest way. So they do that to the To get the focal point to always be the same, yeah. Yeah, the incident angle is going to be different for each one. But the focal point will always be the same. All right, and then there's one other, yeah, one other aberration, chromatic aberrations. 
These are similar. I don't think y'all did this in lab because we don't have the filters, uh, but y'all might have talked about them. Chromatic aberrations occur because the index of refraction is dependent on wavelength. We talked about this before, right? Index of refraction versus wavelength. It looks like this. Uh, down here we have short wavelength. That's blue light. Down here we have red light. Uh, then a light of different wavelengths that enter a lens at the same position will focus at a different focal point. Now, this aberration occurs only in what what mirrors or lenses? In lenses, right? It only occurs in lenses because in mirrors you don't have any refraction. Since no refraction, since you've got no refraction in mirrors. Okay, so blue light would come in. Forget this. Does blue light have the big? In yeah, blue light has a big index of refraction, so it's going to bend a lot. And then red light comes in; it has a smaller index of refraction, so it just bends a little bit, or a little bit less. All right. So your your blue part of the image and your red part of the image appear at different focal points, which just causes you to have a slightly fuzzy image. So you need to know what those two are, what causes them. The first one's caused just because of the spherical shape of the lens or mirror, uh, causes the light to focus at different points. You correct it with an aperture. For telescopes, you'd correct it with a parabolic mirror, almost always. And then chromatic aberration is due to the in index being dependent upon wavelength. Uh, this occurs only in lenses. The different colors focus at different points. Uh, to correct this, Yeah, Jose? Is this what is behind the, you know, whenever they have the 3D with the two colors? Like, no, that's something different. That's different. Mm -hmm. To correct this, you can insert a diverging lens, a concave lens in the system. In a particular way, and it will correct, or at least will mitigate some of this spherical uh, chromatic aberration. So you can have a system of lenses where you take away some of this aberration. All right, let's do a couple questions here. So, yeah. You said uh, diverging being concave. Yeah, so a concave is a diverging lens. Remember, as I said, it's very useful for you to remember these as either convergent or diverging. Concave lenses, convex mirrors are diverging. Convex lenses, concave mirrors are converging. They're switched. The name. I remember them by spin, like what the mirror looks like, and I kind of like take the center of it and then rotate it around itself. So the con, the, yeah, I think. I don't okay. Think this again. Whatever you need to do to remember it is fine, but uh, just don't write it on the back of your eyelids. That's good advice. Just get a tattoo there by my right. uh, Okay, so let's try these, then we'll wrap it up. Most cameras have an aperture to block the outer edges of the lens. What is the purpose of this aperture? more seconds. So the 38. And now this one, lenses experience which of these, spherical or chromatic, or some combination of those.
Remember, for your test on Monday, make sure you work through the homework. Uh, you can look at the old test, too. That'll help you go through the concept test, go through the notes. Make sure you know all the types of images that are formed by the different types of mirrors and lenses. You'll see that heavily in the, in the uh, multiple choice. Just a few more seconds. C is right. Okay, good. God bless you. Hey, so, some of you are still sort of eking out those last of these 50 points, so let me do these others. I'm going to tell you the answers because we're running out of time, but this uh, this one is a curved mirror surface can have, which is it? A. A, yeah, this is A, so you're going to put an A. That's right. No mystery student today. <laughs> And this one is also A. We had a similar question. I think it's A. Yeah, A. This was similar to the one we had about the eye. I'll post these online today so you'll have them. And this one is, what is this one? Yeah, E. I'll post these online so you can see them and read them if you like. I, I did, before you go, though, I, I learned something that was very interesting. Like, my wife and I, we like those little soda cans. Y'all ever get the little coats and the little cans? Like, she only gets, like, two a week. So she, I don't know. She's disciplined that way. But she gets two of those little Coke cans a week and drinks them. But I learned where those things are from. Do you know where they're from? Like, where they make them? No, they make them in mini soda. <laughs> do they actually, or? It's a joke, yeah. yeah I was about to say, do they actually, or is it just a super joke? It's a super joke. Yeah, one of my students.